All right, I'm going to show you how to do a face shattering effect in Photoshop. So first of all, you're going to want to create your canvas. And it really depends on how big your picture is to what you want to make your width and height of the canvas. So my picture, it, I want the face to be right in the middle of it. So I'm going to make it 750 by 400. I've already messed around with that, and that's how good my picture fits. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do that and then you're going to make the canvas black and then you want to get your picture on that and there's my picture and I want to place it so I'm going to place it and now my picture is on there see the layers over here you have that and then you want to make a new document you need to make a grid so you can get the grid on your face so you want to go to a new document and you can do it a bunch of different ways mine's going to be 20 by 20 because that's how it fits my face the best with all the certain blocks and everything so I'm going to do OK and then you want to be able to see this you want to take over here your single row marquee tool and drag it there and make it white just like this and fill it in with white and then you want to do your single column tool and make it white as well so once you're done with that select all and do edit define pattern and name it grid all right, once you're done with that, go back to your picture and create a new layer and name it grid. Once you're done with that, you want to be on your paint bucket tool and go up to foreground where it says foreground to pattern. You want it to be pattern. And you click on it and you make the grid you just made, which mine's right here and then you want to drop it in there. Once you're done with that, go up to where the single row tool and single column tool are and go to the rectangular tool and then make a rectangle around your face. Try to get it as good as possible around your face. So I am going to make this and try to get it exact. You want it exact and then you're going to do select inverse and delete so it's like that and then select inverse again and then edit transform warp and once you're done with that make the grid so it fits your face it might take a while just make it so it fits your face right like that Alright, that's good enough, so you're going to want to deselect that. And then make a new layer and name it holes. Once you have that, go over here to your pen tool and you want to map out little squares. You either want to do five or six. I usually do six, just makes it better. So you map it out and make it perfect if you can right like that and you want to do this five or six times like I said I'm probably going to do it six alright once you're done with that you want to go over here to paths click on that and name that path set one once you do that, right click on that, make selection, press OK, and then go back to that and fill those holes in with black. So, whoops, gotta go to foreground, black. Alright, then once you're done with that, click on your 
face um, layer, whatever it's called, minus the screenshot one, and edit cut, edit paste. And then you see those pixels are on there, and you drag them over to the right, right like that. And then you want to edit free transform to make them smaller or bigger or whatever you want to do with them. I'm going to make them smaller. So that's done. And then you can move them wherever you want to. It doesn't matter. Alright, this layer over here is called layer 2. You don't want to call it that. You want to make it blocks. And then you're going to make go up to layer new group and name it set 1 and then drag this blocks layer into that and then once you have that done you want to duplicate this blocks layer ten times and after every time you duplicate it you want to drag it under the one you just duplicated like I am right now and then click on the left arrow to make kind of a I'm not sure how to explain it just an effect you'll see just watch the blocks as I do this duplicate and then left and once you're done with that you want to select all these layers except for the original blocks layer and merge them name those sides one. Once you're done with that, you can make you can change the blending options. I like to do this. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it makes a cooler effect on it. You can use whichever one of these you want. Just click on whichever one and it will put an effect on them. So right now we're going to use Outer Glow. Outer Glow is my favorite. It looks the best to me. So we're going to do that and change the opacity to 70%. Okay. Then once you're done with that, you want to repeat that step three more times and try to use six blocks as much as possible. All right, now, see these black holes on my face right here are kind of boring, so you can change them if you want to, like I did. I did bevel and emboss. You can see it change in outer glow. I thought that made it look the best. Then just press OK. And notice I did change the grid layer to outer glow and the opacity at 20% so the grid isn't so bright like it was. Alright, now you want some variety on the, get, on the grid on your face when the little holes aren't just black. So you want to make a new layer and name it darker. Then you're going to take your pen tool again and map out a few spots that you would like to be darker. Alright, you're going to go to your paths, name that path darker, and then make a selection and fill it in with black. Go back to your layers and on your darker layer, right click and go to the blending options and you want your blend mode to be soft light so then you can see they're darker and I actually put a drop shadow on mine because I thought it looks pretty cool I thought it looked pretty cool and then you can change the opacity if you want but really you want it dark so you'll keep it there deselect that and then you're going to make lighter ones as well alright right like that and go to your paths again Name this one lighter. Right click, make selection, and then fill these ones in with white. Just like you did the other ones. And you've got to go to your blending options again and make this one soft light again. So now it's lighter. And this one you can mess with if you want to. I don't really like the shadow on the lighter ones. You can do whatever you want, but I'm just going to keep it like that. Press OK, and then deselect. So there you have it.